if you took all the people who were struggling with alcoholism, substances, nicotine, compulsive eating, sexual compulsion, and you started rolling up all the family members who are hooked into that, we have pretty much, if we could vote on the basis of our illness, we'd own Congress. But we don't because of a thing called anonymity. reason that I'm bringing it up is because no disease entity ever got what it needed until the people who had the problem and their helpers stood up, made a case. Part of generativity is how do I leave this culture better than when I came? We know that two-thirds of kids are being actively sexual on the internet by the time they're 13, 14. We know that 34% of them are going to have a lifelong problem with sex addiction. We know and one of the things that I started to count with my patients at the Meadows is how many, I asked them, when did you start? And about half of them, it's about the age of seven. What we know is if 600 kids an hour are being exposed for the first time to the sexual intensity of the internet. 200 of those kids are going to have a lifelong struggle with being able to make good decisions about their sexuality. 80 of those kids started under the age of 11. And Geronimo had a favorite story, and it's an Apache story, that I think that fits for us. It's a story about how we blame others for our own problem. And it's a very interesting story. Prairie dogs make burrows and homes, and they tunnel to each other's houses and what have you, and there's this whole network of tunnels. And rattlesnakes love the tunnels, and they move in. And they're quite clever about being benign neighbors. And the prairie dogs get very used to having them in their holes. And what happens is, with time, pups are born. Snakes know this, wait for this. And then the snake that has that territory takes one pup from one family, another pup from another family, another pup. So they're very judicious about how they do this. And then pretty soon all the pups are gone, and then they take the parents. And the prairie dogs during this whole time thinks that somebody from the outside is coming and taking the pups, so they become hypervigilant guard their holes, extra guards are posted, and they're worried by the attack is coming from the outside. But actually, it's from within. And it's the snake that they have as a neighbor. And so the tenor of the story is to, to think about it as an outside problem when it actually is an inside problem. And that's how I look at our culture and addiction. We can blame it on lots of things. But the fact is, we have been a culture of abundance, and we have immersed ourselves in addictions in a way that has not ever happened in history. Nobody eats like us. Nobody has sex like we're having sex. I'm not against sex. I'm just talking about 
the amount we made over 400 million pages of pornography last year. To be a partnership culture, a collaborative culture, requires that men and women treat each other with a respect. It's where it all begins. So I think about this and generativity in terms of why do this? The questions I think we need to ask is, with all the good things I've gotten from recovery, what am I going to invest in the recovery community? How am I going to do that? It's part of my life. That needs to be the challenge. And one of the reasons we started the American Foundation for Addiction Research was one of the things when you bring all the addictions together, your vision of what's happening in our culture changes. Changes not only how we look at recovery, it also means how we look at our nation and our culture and our problems. And why is it? It seems like more and more things can't get done that it's not working like it's supposed to. Would we have the ability to sacrifice like earlier generations had in order to have this country? Now, going back to Geronimo before he died, he said to his followers, there's two types of people. He divided them into the Dene and the Dana. He says, you know, if you're in a battle for something that's really, truly worthwhile, and you're sacrificing everything because it matters, you'd be able to look over your shoulder and you could see that you have footprints because you've had an impact on the, as you've walked. The Dina are people who are in a battle that they really believe in. He says, you can believe in the battle. But if you look over your shoulder and you don't see your footprints, the battle is lost. And you are really the walking dead. So, I think between looking at the principles and looking at our work as a foundation to pull communities together and get the message out about addiction in all of its many forms is central to this thing we call generativity or passing it on. And how we are going to be present is a challenge that needs to go out to the whole recovery community. And I think that's why it matters. And that's why we've done this.